Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to once again see my great friends and people that uh, I wish well to. Um, hmm. What's this uh, to uh, topic of discussion today? I think it's going to be, have you ever seen that movie, The Truman Show? You know, with Jim Carrey in it, it's called The Truman Show. It's where one guy is like followed around and videoed everywhere he goes. And um, then his whole life is put on the uh, television system with advertising so that everybody should uh, be able to uh, see what this person's doing because he's quite a good person, so. Um, you know, it sort of feels like that now in today's society, um, that everybody in today's society is on the Truman Show and we're all being filmed wherever we go uh, by all these cameras on the streets, all these cameras in the public transportation and Satellites, of course. Oh, satellites, man. The technology of satellites. They can, they can see and hear you from outer space. What to speak of helicopters with uh, laser microphones. In Los Angeles, they fly helicopters over the city with laser microphones to catch the drug dealers. So, uh, everything is being videotaped and uh, exploited and studied from every person in this world. And I mean every person, not just me or anybody else. But even, I think this has been going on for a very long time. Because 5,000 years ago, I was studying these ancient, well, these texts that I was studying are from 5,000 year old Indian uh, literature the Vedic literature, and in that, in those literatures, it speaks about this one Hindu priest that um, was going about his business, and and everything he said and did was being written down in a, in a book. Okay, and even when he went inside and talked to different people and everything, every single thing that he said and did was written down in the Vedic literature. And, um, you know, I'm thinking, now surely this person didn't have uh, people follow him around writing down everything he said and did in, uh, in a book. Because even Lord Jesus didn't have that happen, not while he was alive. Uh, so... A lot of things that Lord Jesus did, of course, were written down. But, you know, a lot of them were written down after, you know, like, you know, maybe several lifetimes after Lord Jesus had, had left the planet. So a lot of these things were just remembered about them, passed on, uh, passed on through oral tradition. And, um, and some of them were written down, of course. But a lot of it wasn't written down until after, you know, years after he left. So, I mean, you know, they didn't have, I guess they didn't have tape recorders and stuff like that back then. But maybe they did. That's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking. Maybe they did. I mean, they found a satellite in orbit that's over 5,000 years old called the, the Dark Knight Satellite. And uh, they don't even know what this satellite does. Now maybe it's recording everybody. You know, this technology that they had thousands of years ago was so advanced. And um, most people now are starting to think that there's an artificial intelligence computer that is uh, controlling the whole world and uh, that is beaming everything back to uh, its planet of origin. So, uh, 
You know, these are these are theories. These are theories that are being contemplated, and a lot of them are uh, you're finding out to be valid valid theories too. That because um, of five thousand years ago, this priest was being videoed, videoed, and everything he said was being recorded, and put and then put into a book. I mean, who's to say that? This technology that we're just now getting now, you know, hasn't been around for like millions of years, you know. I mean, who's to say that it, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that it has been, that we've just been given it recently within the last hundred years or so. But this technology to record every single thing that someone says, does, and even thinks, you know, the... Uh, they say, you know, your your thought patterns, you know, give off electricity because your uh, your body actually gives off electricity, you know, from your soul. So um, they say that they can scan you, they can scan your body, and um, that when they lock on to your brain, to your brain waves, that... Uh, they can read your mind because the computer translates it, all your electrical impulses, and it knows how your body uh, functions. And um, then they can like read your mind. They can they can see what you're thinking. And that's what they want to do anyway. They want to get so deep into your personal life that anything you say, do, think, and consider is all documented for uh, them to, to study and watch. So who's them? Who's them? The artificial intelligent computer that doesn't trust any humans or any other species on this planet. Uh, that's who's that's who's them is. You know, we think now, oh, we have this artificial intelligence. This has been around for millions of years, and that system that's controlling the world right now is far more intelligent than any human or any any other kind of life form on this planet, I can, I can assure you. And the technology they had back then is just completely amazing. I mean, we're like, we're like puppies compared to these people, like animals. Uh... Anyway, I wouldn't call us puppies, but, you know, what I'm talking about. They, they view us as uh, intelligent monkeys. <laughs> so, uh, eh, I'm just thinking about that. I'm not saying it's true. It's, it's just the theories that are going around. These are theories that are going around uh, a very long time. Uh, I do know that... Uh, these inner earth creatures it's listed in the Vedas the inner earth people have technology that is uh, millions of times greater than ours because they didn't destroy ourselves through Noah's flood like like we were destroyed like this civilization I'm not saying we, I'm saying this civilization was destroyed uh, so we're getting the technology back. They've, they've kept it uh, safe and they're giving it to us, spoon feeding it to society little by little. Unfortunately, it's very good technology, but uh, the government just wants to weaponize everything, you know, to control people. They just want to weaponize everything to control the masses. Why is that? Why do you want to control people? Why in the world would you want to control other people? Think about that. And you know what demons do? I'll tell you what demons do. Demons control people through poison, fear, and um, through pain and torture. That's what demons do. And think about this. We are being poisoned. If you drink the tap water in America, you're being poisoned from every drop of water you drink. 
with the fluoride in the water. It's calcifying your pineal glands so that you cannot see uh, and connect with the universe. It's, cal it's cal calcifying it. And um, so they're poisoning our ability to realize ourself. They're killing us spiritually. They're also uh, chemtrailing the air that we breathe, uh, filling the bodies, everyone's body with heavy metals. And um, so you wonder, and plus the viruses are releasing on society um, to poison us that way. This is what demons do. This is what demons do. They poison you, and uh, then they treat you badly while they're doing it. Yeah, they criticize you, browbeat you, steal all your money, take everything you own uh, while they're doing it. And that's what demons do. That's what demons do. And uh, now the 5G antennas they're putting up, God help us. I mean, those, those things uh, are dangerous as hell. God help us with those. That's what this, uh, in my opinion, this is my opinion, that uh, the 5G is what's killing everybody. And they're saying it's a virus. It's like they said the Spanish flu was a virus, but it was really the um, radars they put up that was doing that to people. You have to excuse these flies, but my, the person, um, somebody put a bunch of trash outside in the alley, and it's attracting all these flies. And now I've got about, uh, I've got about a thousand flies in my living room, which is no fun. And I can't seem, I could spray the whole living room, which I'll do, but I'm waiting on the uh, Wi-Fi person to come. As soon as he leaves, I'm going to spray the whole living room. Um, but anyway, back to what I'm saying uh, was that, you know, demons poison you. That's how they control you. Why do they want to control us anyway? Well, they want to kill us, I know that. They don't really want to control us. They just want us not to revolt before they kill everyone. Then all that's going to be left over is them. And then they can just have everybody in cages. And they can torture us and get their kicks by stealing our blood and drinking it. Our adrenochrome, adrenochrome laced blood. So that's what they want to do to us. Is God, God going to allow that? No, he's not. <laughs> why, are you thinking, why are you seeing all these natural disasters now? All these floodings, all the floods, and all the bad weather, earthquakes, and uh, volcano eruptions and everything. And this, you know, uh, these actions, these demons, see, they're actually hurting us by their actions. They're hurting all society and all the world by their actions. They're creating karma for the whole world. They're creating negative karma for the whole world by their actions. And that affects the good people too. Because we have to live on this planet with them. So uh, anyway, there's something I was thinking about. And um, some other things that uh, techn technologically that uh, these people have, they've got stargates. They've got stargates, and uh, I'll just explain to you how the sun works. I know this for a fact. The sun, the sun is a stargate, and if you go through the sun, which is made up of uh, electromagnetic energy, if you go through it in a spacecraft, you go into the next galaxy. It's not a physical planet, as, as you may think, but it's a stargate to the next galaxy, and... Um, the sun's uh, light that comes off the sun, these magnetic impulses, the, the solar flares, you call them solar flares. These solar flares, when they hit the planet's at atmosphere, they hit the planet's at atmosphere, that's when they turn warm. They turn warm when they hit the atmosphere. And that's why, that's why everybody thinks that the sun is hot, but it's not. It's not hot at all. And uh, you can go right through it. It's not hot. Uh, but the solar flares and all the solar energy comes off the sun. When it hits the atmosphere of any planet, then the atmosphere becomes warm. 
And so you think the sun is giving you heat. Well, it is giving you heat, but it's not giving you heat through fire. That, that's, a, that's a wrong conception. So I know that for a fact. And I also know that you can bend space through, through uh, stargates. You can bend space. In other words, you can take space through electromagnetic energy and you can pull space inwards and then you can pull it like a like an accordion. If you think of an accordion, you pull each layer in, 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 in. And then, see, the accordion, when it's stretched out, is long. But if you pull the layers in, then it makes a space you can travel through very quickly. So that's how you build a stargate. And stargates are a reality. They used to have them uh, 5,000 years ago. They still have them today, but uh, they're hush-hush, top secret. But there's no reason not to know about all this stuff because... Uh, Number one, we can't do anything about it. Number two, it doesn't really affect us uh, on a day-to-day -day, uh, level. Um, what we're seeing, when we look in the world, we're like a frog in a well. You know, fro one thing I don't like is flies. <laughs> but um, anyway, we're like a frog in a well. Everybody except self-realized people are like frogs in a well. What does that mean, being a frog in a well? That means if you have a frog and you put it in the bottom of a deep, dark well, like everybody in the world is right now, except for a select few, and then you have the well surrounding that frog, and then if some other frog goes up to the top of the well and says, hey, come on up, come out, you know, you're, you're, you're trapped in there. You're a prisoner in that well. Then the frog, who's an uh, egomaniac, stupid soul, says, no, no, this, this world is great. This, you know, this is great. This is all there is. This is all there is. And all he looks around, he said, look, I can see all the walls around, and I'm living nicely and eating every day. But then the frog on the top of the wall says, no, there's so much more, there's so much more to this. Come out, come up here to the surface. And the frog won't do it because it's conditioned to live in a well. Same thing with the elephant. To train an elephant, you take an elephant, you chain his, chain his leg, and then when he's a baby, you chain his leg, and he can only, only walk two feet. And then when he's a big elephant and you put a chain on his leg, he thinks he can't break the chain. He thinks he, he thinks he can't break the chain because he never could when he was a baby. So he's conditioned to be a prisoner. Similarly, we're conditioned to be prisoners in this world, to be slaves in this society um, because we don't want to open our minds and become self-realized and realize that there's so much more to this universe that so we just look for it, so much more do self self-realization, meditation and prayer, then you can see the whole reality of the universe. And you can also see that this this world is like a Truman show. <laughs> Just like a Truman show. Everything being videotaped, recorded, and people recording you with their cell phones and you know, it's like it's like this is a big movie set, right? <laughs> And everybody's interested in everybody else's business but their own. You know, they can't mind their own business. Shoot, why, why would they be able to do that? You can be the most peaceful person in the world and some jackass comes up and starts harassing you. Some, un some person that's not self-realized is just an animal and they want you to be an animal too. But we must say no, we will resist completely and we will surrender everything to the Lord and be happy, become self-realized, be happy. That's what we should do. Anyway, there's so many books on it, so many books on yoga meditation. I think everyone should take it up, take up a, a prayerful, peaceful life, and then uh, be happy, go home. This place is not a place for, for a gentleman or gentlewoman. The world is not a place for a gentleman or a gentlewoman. It's here for just to do our business, 
wake up and get out and go back home, reconnect with God and all our friends and family and everybody, all our well-wishing souls that we're connected to are waiting for us in the kingdom of God. So anyway, uh, that's just my message. That's something I was thinking about. And uh, I'm going to get these flies out. I can't stand it anymore. <laughs> anyway, have a great day. Thank you.